So hello students. Uh, today I am going to discuss the drawdown testing. But before discussing this drawdown testing, I want to just recapitulate some idea of doing the build-up test. Now, as you know that this build-up test have been performed earlier from our earlier discussion, that this build-up test are actually gives us some idea about the reservoir properties, reservoir boundaries, and distance of the reservoir boundaries, as well as uh, we can able to find out the reservoir size. Okay, so in this way, this build-up data is very useful, and there are strong reasons why we do this build-up test. The reasons are number one, the math is quite simple for zero rate. Everybody would agree with this because the rate that we consider for build-up test is zero at the time of shutting. Whatever rate we consider for our calculation purpose are the rate or the rates of the past productions. So generally in Horner approximation we consider the Q last and the pseudo producing time. So all of these things we have already discussed, I am not going to that much detail. Number two reason which makes the build-up test quite useful for us is that the data tends to be very smoother because we have just zeroed one of the parameter which is rate and therefore what is the coming is only pressure which is to be recorded with time. Therefore the smoothness of the data is very good in particularly build-up test. So once you are able to plot the derivative type curves matching, you will see what you will see that the derivatives are very sensitive graphs and if the data are not smooth, this data derivative type curve is about to fluctuate and will give us the error in the results okay and difficult to interpret therefore the data needs to be very smooth very recorded in good conditions so equipment should be robust everything which makes the build-up test quite good number three three it is quite easy to execute the procedure right so you hook up the cage shut in the well you place the tool bottom hole and you can record right so not much it will not uh, make you pain in recording the data gauging the data so overall it makes the build-up test quite useful however if we understand this build-up from the cash flow point of view what we'll see that this build-up requires the well to be shut in which means that there is a delay in production right and the production is directly related to cash flows so understand if the certain time is going to be very large then the revenue generated will go down right also the management approval to run a build-up test can be easily obtained when the well is going to be shut in anyway due to some kind of pipeline or facility maintenance some kind of slack demand you have or movement of the rig right so the well is going to be shut in anyway in any case just record the pressure and try to learn something about the reservoir so whenever the well is in certain condition it is a good opportunity for the engineer to understand that data right this data tells you a lot about the reservoir another thing about build-up test is that uh, it is an opposite of drawdown testing right so in vice versa we can say this drawdown testing is opposite of that of build-up test so now in next slide we'll be discussing about drawdown testing so before going into much detail of the drawdown testing we must understand few things about drawdown number one that the well is produced on a fixed choke setting right so choke need to be fixed at a condition where 
the pressure of the upstream to that of downstream is around 2 is to 1 or in other way around we can say that if the downhole sorry downstream pressure to the upstream pressure ratio is around 0.58 to 0.6 right so that type of choke setting needs to be done and in that case what will obtain is the critical flow now once you have the critical flow will have the constant flow rate right irrespective of the disturbance on the downstream side so whatever disturbance which is taking place on the downstream side the upstream pressure and the downstream pressure ratio if it is comes around 0.58 then the flow that we are getting will always be constant right and that particular constant flow rate that we need actually for this drawdown testing right so we always need to fix the choke setting in order to obtain the constant flow rate which is the necessity in case of drawdown testing right it is also called single flow rate testing next thing to remember about drawdown is based on rate of pressure decline if the choke is adjusted anyway the rate of pressure decline will be adjusted too therefore it will make the well test interpretation less reliable so therefore these are certain things which need to be remembered for drawdown testing <coughs> this drawdown testing is also a constant choke testing not a constant rate testing right so by mean of constant choke condition what you will do you are making the rate constant however with time the rate may not be constant it depends on the downstream and upstream pressure so if upstream pressure goes down actually the flow rate may change the period of time Therefore, the concept of multi-rate testing has originated, right? Now, in drawdown testing, what we do is we produce simultaneously and test, right? So, both test and production goes hand in hand in drawdown testing. So, there are some advantages that we have discussed and in this slide, we'll also highlight those. So, um, in build-up test as we see that the revenue goes down however this drawdown testing we do production as well as testing hand in hand so the management sees the cash flow and they generally recommend such kind of testing which will give you the insight of the reservoir as well as the cash flows right also, these data are very useful for reservoir engineers because these data gives them reservoir size. So, we have put some calculation based on estimating the reservoir size uh, out of this drawdown testing. We'll discuss in some coming slides. Also, the production engineering evaluate the completion and for completing the well, the data need to be gathered which comes from this type of test drawdown testing evaluates the well reservoir at production condition we already discussed in our previous slide in case of multi-phase flow this is very important in case of multi-phase flow if the reservoir or if the rock is highly compressive there can be significant differences between a build-up response and drawdown response so it is the multi-phase flow which is causing difficulties in two different type of test so drawdown test or drawdown response is mostly affected by such kind of test right so now it is affected by multi-phase flow so therefore this drawdown will be likely to be more valid in such certain conditions where 
the real picture is coming out of the test right now sometimes or in most of the times this build up and draw down test are done in succession the reason being is that if the analysis of pressure build up and draw down are coming to be same then there is a greater confidence in the results and the outcome that we are discussing out of these two tests will be more sure about that right so this this particular discussion has been taken from Halliburton PDF that I downloaded and the topic was type of well test built up and drawn down okay let's move ahead now what is drawdown test right till now you must have an idea what is a drawdown test it is opposite to that of build up first of all i want to mention that now initially there was a certain before producing the reservoir and the certain has been done to maintain the pressure stabilized right now once the pressure is stabilized it will allow the well to flow at a constant rate okay so this is a drawdown test now what we estimate out of this test the permeability the skin reserve volume these tests are particularly applicable for new well exploratory well right now if i talk about exploratory well we try to find out we want to find out the fluid properties as well so if we could produce the fluid from the reservoir the fluid property can be known and also the volume of the drain of the well volume of the drainage area can be easily estimated right and is also not led to any kind of revenue losses as that of build up test so in many ways this type of test are very important however there are the cases where the constant rate maintenance is very difficult right so if you want to maintain the constant rate throughout it is very difficult therefore the concept of multi rate test has been emerged now as you can see the equation one this equation is generally written for a well flowing at a constant rate for a t period of time right so the t is actually the time of production so this is the pressure distribution which is shown by equation 1 for drawdown testing i would mention that please remember this equation because this is most of the time required in calculations now as far as the flow regime has concerned uh, is concerned in a similar fashion as we have seen in build up test we have three different flow regimes right one is early time region middle time region and late time region now in early time region the flow is mostly dominated by well bore effects right and we want that whatever the flow fluid flow is taking place at the surface should be equal to the rate of fluid enters into the well bore right and once these two rates are equal then only the well bore storage effect will go otherwise the well bore storage will be dominating and will not allow the middle time region to reach right so most of the time this early time data is not useful and it will distort your middle time region it will not allow the middle time region to reach as fast as possible so our always the objective is we want the rate at the surface and the well bore to be equal right now duration of well bore unloading can be estimated qualitatively by log log plot and using the type curve empirical correlations we have different type of type curves and these are very well utilized for estimating the well bore domination effect 
and the middle time region. Late time region begins when radius of investigation reaches a portion of reservoir influenced by reservoir boundaries or massive heterogeneities. So this late time region can be easily demarcated once we have the pressure drawdown data. We plot it on different type of graphs and we can easily demarcate this late time region, early time region and middle time region. It is log log graph and type curve which will allow us to clearly see such kind of flow regimes. Okay. So as you can see here we have equation 2 which is the dimensionless time and CSD is the well bore storage constant, dimensionless constant. So it is very critical parameter which need to be evaluated before the reservoir properties has to be estimated using type curve. So CSD is very important and TWBS that is the time for the well bore storage to end is given by this particular equation right so analytically the expression is this one equation 3 now this middle time region is very important as I said different properties can be evaluated once we know the slope of middle time region we will be able to evaluate slope and then once we have the value of slope we can easily find out the permeability of the reservoir and as well as skin factor so this region is quite important and as far as we have seen that this build-up test that we have performed earlier and the data that we got from drawdown testing are almost giving similar kind of graph and interpretation is also similar however some few equations are different right now time required for the late time region to begin for a well centered in circular drainage area is given by this equation 7 right so you need different properties of the reservoir area and k right so this would be the time required for the late time region to begin right in case of the well centered in circular drainage area however if the shapes are complex right for complicated shapes similar exercise as we did in unit 1 table 1.2 is used to estimate the time for which the reservoir is in finite acting and the time for which the boundary effects are felt right okay so you can see this figure 3.1 here you can see this this is the early time data of the drawdown testing which is actually not useful and is distorting our middle time region now this middle time region has to be identified for knowing the different reservoir properties and this late time region is actually uh, telling about the boundaries and various reservoir heterogeneities okay now this uh, data which is coming out of from uh, drawdown testing is also useful in estimation of pore volume. I recommend you to go through example 3.1 John Lee test book where the data allows you to calculate the pore volume of the reservoir. If you recall unit 1 pseudo state solution page number 6 of John Lee test book there what we did we did a differentiation with respect to time for the solution that is coming out of pseudo static state solution and we arrived at an equation which is similar to equation 9 shown in this slide now what you can see is that this equation is showing you the relationship between slope of the drawdown curve and the relationship between slope and your drainage area volume vp so from this equation if we can evaluate the slope of the uh, data in the region particularly middle time region this data will give you or allow you to estimate the bp that is pore volume of the reservoir and it's very useful right okay 
so as I recommended you please do the example 3.1 from John Lee so the data which is there in table 3.1 I brought up here here you can see that time pressure is given right so the pressure drawdown with time is given these are the various properties other properties which are needed to be used in this particular solution so what you have to do here you have to estimate the formation permeability and the skin also you have to find out the pore volume so initially what we do here in step one you have to plot this data in simple Cartesian format and you will see the quite deviation in initial region this is ETR region and in late time region so this particular region is the middle time region right so this is not Cartesian sorry this is between um, Cartesian and semi-log this is semi-log graph of drawdown testing now the same data if you plot in log log curve where on the y axis you have delta p and on the x axis you have time so this is a log log curve and to find out the time up to which the well bore storage is dominated if you can see this graph you cannot say this point or this point right so such type of graph should be superimposed in the type curve to find out exact value of the time at which the well bore storage ends right so uh, here the interpretation is quite difficult as you can see in this figure uh, it is difficult to say where the well bore storage has been end and uh, where the boundary effects begin to start right so using the superposition superimposition principle uh, this graph is, can be superimposed on the type curve and the various properties can be evaluated like well bore storage skin and reservoir permeability right so as you can see here in this step we find out the slope of this graph and the permeability is found to be 7.65 Now in step 4 what you can see that the calculation says that the uh, early time data or the well bore distortion ends at 12 hours. So using radius of investigation we saw that up to 427 fit right up to 427 fit pressure transient has moved and the, all the data is actually well bore storage data so up to 427 fit we cannot evaluate different reservoir properties from 427 fit onwards up to 1510 fit we have this middle time region where the reservoir seems to be in finite acting and there is a radial flow Therefore, this region is quite important for evaluating different properties out of this reservoir. In step 5, what we did, as we did in build-up test, same equation is used here to find out the skin factor, which is coming to be around 6.37. In step 6, as I said, CS, CS is the uh, well bore storage coefficient CS which is found from the different properties such as area of the well bore and density of the fluid which is coming around 0 0.0106 barrel per psi and the time of well bore storage ending coming to be around 4.47 from this particular calculation so therefore the graph says that 12 hour and this particular calculation says 4.4 hours so we need to take the help of type curve to actually estimate the time up to which the effect of well bore 
has been dominated right let's move on now let's move on to multi rate test here what you can see that whatever we discuss here we'll be talking about infinite acting reservoir and slightly compressible fluid right so our discussion is limited here up to unit 4 after that when we move to gas well testing we'll see how we do multi rate testing for gas wells there are slight changes in the equations and those equations are actually used for multi rate testing in case of gas well but here i want to emphasize some points what is the need for this type of test right now in second point you can see that sometimes it is very difficult to maintain the constant rate in case of simple drawdown in simple drawdown we generally say about the rate we say about the rate is constant right so if we see physically this is not true the rate is very variable and maintaining a single rate is very difficult and therefore if you want to estimate the real conditions of the reservoir or real properties of the reservoir you have an understanding how the multi rate test can be estimated properly or can be taken properly to estimate the reservoir properties right so this need to be understood another thing that in gas well we have two different kind of skin one kind of skin is a skin which is due to the formation damage right and other kind of skin is due to turbulence near the well bore right so this turbulence near the well bore due to the high flow rate near the well bore causes the turbulence and it is two different kind of a skin which is actually responsible for the distortion right so therefore to estimate these two different skin components we need to do multi rate testing we'll discuss this when we go to gas well testing right next multi rate test with more than two rate provides data redundancy which can be used for detecting insufficient cleanup and improve the data quality right so more the test we do more the data redundancy can be eliminated right so it's also important for cleanup so more the well multi rate test will do more the well will clean up and also the data quality will improve right now in this figure 3.6 what you can see we have different multi flow rates right initially you have q1 then the flow rate has increased then decreased then becomes zero so there are a lot of variations and there can be n number of variations right so this figure shows actually the n rate changes during production history now here the question arises is that what is the well bore pressure producing with this schedule right you want to estimate the well bore pressure now with such kind of schedule it is very difficult to interpret that part actually and to answer this we have superposition principle and it works in the same way as we have discussed in unit 1 all right so we will use superposition principle of logarithmic approximation to ai solution to answer such type of multi rate analysis right so here what you can see is this is the equation which is for simple single flow rate right and if you try to modify this equation what you can see here is that if you go on simplifying this equation you have a this simple function right so this pi minus pwf 
is equal to m dash q log t plus s bar here the s bar is this quantity shown in the right hand side corner now here you can see the flow rate has been maintained constant this is for single flow rate well and this m dash is given by 162.6 mu b upon kh so here m dash is not the same as m earlier here the m dash is not containing q anymore here so you can see this pi minus pwf is a linear function of log t plus s bar okay so this is the equation of a straight line if you plot pressure versus log t okay so let's move on to principle of superposition where you have seen that uh, there are different flow rates okay and well is producing for different times so this this principle is very simple and using this principle we can able to find out the pressure distribution right so equation number 10 that you can see here looks slightly complicated but here i want to simplify this by uh, showing you some graphs okay so here you can see if we understand this in this way that there are various production which is happening as we have seen in our last slide multi-rate test there are flow changes every time every durations so initially there is a q1 okay so we consider that the flow is taking place at rate q1 for time t right so your first part of this equation will be m dash q1 log t plus s bar which is same as for a well producing at a constant rate for time t right now in the second case what you will see here is that in second case we will consider that well is producing at different rate q2 minus q1 right q2 minus q1 now the elapsed time would be now t minus t1 right okay so in this way we can go on and write for different conditions so if we can write for this particular condition what you will see here is that we have m bar q2 minus q1 into log of t minus t1 plus s bar so here instead of t now here the elapsed time is t minus t1 right so we have put the value of t minus t1 and rest further we can make same assumptions right so in the third case what we can do we have q3 at time t2 right so now t2 is from here to here so the total time t minus t2 right so this is the elapsed time for next production so this is q3 minus q2 Q3 minus Q2. Okay. So in this way, the series will go on. Right. Now, the same equation, equation number 10, can be written in terms of slightly different. Right. Although these two equations are same, however, this is written in slightly different form, where Qn is the total sum of all the rates. Right. Qn. Now, sorry, Qn is the last rate, not sum of all rates. Qn is the last rate. Now, this is the simple principle of superposition and it is easily understood. Now, if you apply this simple case for a condition where you can see that this qn is 0 right now when this qn is 0 
let's think this qn is zero in case of build up test right so your last flow rate whatever the past rate is your last flow rate is zero so you have to understand this and if you put this particular thing in the equation what you will do what you will find is the simple equation of pressure buildup right so if you, this qn is zero there are different rates q1 q2 minus q1 and at last what you'll see qn is absent right so in this particular part you will see qn is absent as you can see equation 10 there is qn here so you'll only have minus qn minus 1 and there is no qn now because the last rate is 0 okay so this equation takes this form okay now in this case the n if you take n equal to 1 right now n equal to 1 means what is the meaning of n equal to 1 single flow rate right so you are considering a single flow rate q1 now so you have uh, in terms of horner approximation if you say whatever production history may be in the past we are taking only q last and if we are taking q last right so q last will consider the cumulative productions uh, in the past and then we will come up with a pseudo producing time so here what you can see is this q1 consider all the past flow rate and uh, this is the actual q last and t is the pseudo producing time right this t is the pseudo producing time so we have arrived at this particular equation if we take n equal to 1 okay so similarly you can understand this particular application and this particular application i have written this for you okay let's move on now sometimes we need this equation which is shown in this particular slide what i have shown is pressure buildup preceded by two flow rates right so why do we need two flow rates as we have said that in the pressure buildup test we are only concerned about last flow rate right so what is the duration of last flow rate the last flow rate duration should be twice that of its preceding flow rate right and if it is not so the pseudo producing time given by Horner's will not be applicable so therefore if the preceding or if the last flow rate that is Q last duration is lesser than its preceding rate right in that case we should also take the preceding rate in our calculation and once we do so the equation is modified as equation 15 right equation 15 and if you put this equation 15 in terms of various properties what you will see is this equation number 16 right so when do we need this this is needed when the q last duration is not double that of its preceding flow rate therefore we have to take or consider the preceding flow rate also right so this is the applicability of pressure buildup preceded by two flow rates right if you have any doubts any question based on this particular side slide you can approach me anytime right okay now this is a simple numerical which is considering the multi-flow test data for infinite acting reservoir assuming 
minimal well bore storage right so in this particular question the well bore storage part is eliminated and we are only left with the multi flow rate test data which need to be evaluated right and what you can see here is that the time versus pressure right so this time and pressure are given this pressure value is um, is your drawdown pressure and uh, this qn which is here or you can also see here this qn so sorry for this okay so here what you can see here that you are given with the value of q right so this is the average value of q that is average value of rate during first hour right so for first hour this rate has been averaged for second hour the rate has been averaged and for the third hour for the next three hours the rate has been averaged 159 right so what we have to do here that you have to first point the plotting first we have to generate this plotting function okay so your plotting function is nothing but pi minus pwf right to this particular function now this particular function is nothing but uh, this equation okay so this is a multi-rate equation that need to be calculated here and once you have this particular function this that is these two values these two values now these two values has to be plotted right and once we plot it here what you can see is a straight line this one now this is straight line the slope of this straight line is nothing but m dash now here m dash will give you the value of kh right kh is the product of permeability and height of the reservoir right perforation height you can say next uh, the intercept on the y-axis will give you b dash right so if you take it from 0 0 whatever intercept you are getting on y-axis is nothing but b dash right now this b dash is very useful in estimating the skin factor now you can see this equation for multi-rate flow it is not similar to that of uh, pressure buildup or pressure drawdown slight modifications are there so this p dash is actually giving you the value of skin factor so this b dash can be evaluated by uh, the intercept on the y-axis and this s can be estimated right so in this way multi-rate flow test data for infinite acting reservoir can be estimated right or uh, we can estimate permeability and skin from multi-rate flow test data if you have any question any doubt regarding the calculation you approach me please so next we'll discuss the analysis of type curve in uh, in the next uh, particular online lecture so uh, I have to say bye here for now. Thank you.